What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Copart for another Copart walk around. You see I'm standing in front of a bunch of travel trailers. Well, that's because I'm looking to pick up another one. So let's jump into it with number one on my list. This is a 2018 Gray Wolf Limited. I don't know the size of it, but it's sitting at about $1,200 right now. I like that it's got this, uh, I bet it doesn't work. Yeah, it's dead. That sucks, and you need a handle to be able to adjust this up and down. So that's fun, but it does have the dual propane tanks. And this is a hail damage trailer. It's actually pretty nice. If I remember correctly, this has one slide out on the other side. This is a very nice looking trailer, guys. Oh, it's a toy hauler too? Oh, I need this. I need this. Yeah, I need this. Dang it. I don't want it, but I need it. I can't wait to check out the inside. Yes, yes, I already purchased another travel trailer. Uh, an RV, sorry. I purchased an RV, but I'm also looking for a travel trailer. What the hell kind of spider? Woo, he made him a home down inside the fresh water connection. Ooh, boy. <laughs> Well, that's not going to be pleasant, is it? <laughs> Let's see if we can lock him out. There we go. <laughs> Screw that. Black tank flush. Boy, that's nice. That is real nice that you can flush it out. So this side is the hail damage side. The other side does not appear to be hail damaged at all. Huh. I guess we'll need to go inside. That's always a good sign. That's... It's always a good sign. I will be the first to admit that uh, the RV that I bought, or motorhome, I don't know if there's a difference, but the RV that I bought, yeah, it gets hot inside. I, I mean, ungodly hot. And when you turn on the air conditioning, uh, it definitely helps, but it still gets pretty hot. Uh, but now that one is a 1987. This is a 2018. So I would hope that this one might be in a little bit better condition. This one's a little, it's a little weird. As soon as you walk in, you've got a bed. So, I mean, there's like very little privacy. You've got this little, this little curtain here, I guess you could slide over. So I guess that, that helps. But I mean, as soon as you walk in, you've got this, this bed looks like, uh, an animal tore that up pretty good. Let's see how the, uh, how do you open this? One side should just slide. There it goes. Okay, so that's not busted. That's good. I don't see any damage yet to the ceiling. You got a nice sink and countertop here. Of course, it's going to be really cramped until you uh, pull that slide out, but this is a very nice U shape dinette. It's, it's all right, you know, it's a little wobbly, but that's fine. If I can get through here, <laughs> I don't fit very well. I don't see any, uh, I don't see any TVs or anything yet. Got a couple keys, nice cabinets, some nice recessed lighting. Very nice stainless microwave, stainless vent. I'm sure this is not real, no, that's not real granite. So, uh-uh. This is a really clean stove. I like this stove. This is really nice. Very nice stove. What about the oven? No oven? No way. Did they start taking ovens out of RVs? Surely not. Huh. Okay. So I guess you have no oven. Refrigerator. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Ugh. Oh my god. I shouldn't have done that. Oh wow. Okay. Um, when that slide goes out, I guess this is where your TV would be. Yeah, there's a TV wall mount right there, some recessed lighting, your cable hookups up there, and some more hookups over there. So once this is out of the way, you would have room for your uh, your entertainment center. Let's go see what's in the toy hauler. Interest. Oh, dude. Uh, well, 
Okay, in the toy hauler area would be your shower. There's something all over the floor, so it almost looks like someone crapped themselves everywhere. So that's really nice. That looks pretty gnarly in there too. That is a, uh... oh, you know what it is? Yeah, hail damage to the roof. This has all had rainwater inside of it. So that's really, really nice. <sighs> Open this door, get some light in here real quick. Okay, well, I guess that's all just papers. I, I don't know, that looks that looks like some dookie papers, what it looks like. But somebody at least tried, they put some towels down to try to, to dry some of this stuff up. Who knows how much damage there actually is. There's a place for a TV here. You can, you've got uh, some seating in here as well, and then you got this fold down here so you could just ride your toys into it be it a motorcycle or whatever you got d hooks all over the place even got ventilation back here as well which is really nice so you can keep it hot and relatively cool you need to climb up on the roof really to see the extent of the damage up there obviously we have one skylight that has been destroyed now this doesn't have a ladder either no there's no ladder Oh, damn. Yeah, getting up there is going to be fun. Really, that looks like the extent of the damage. You need a tail light cover there. That's no big deal. That should be readily available. Uh, and you need to cover up that vent, even if it's just temporarily. Hopefully, the AC unit and everything up there is fine as well. Now, these don't have generators. That's one of the things I, I, I'm still learning about them. And I was kind of like... Shouldn't these come with generators so you can run these things off grid? And while to me that makes perfect sense, from everything I read, uh, pull behinds generally do not come with uh, with generators. I know it's crazy. Now of course you can go buy a generator; it's no big deal. You can go buy a, go to Harbor Freight, get you a Predator series, and uh, you could run these off of a generator all day long. You just have to provide your own. 2018 Gray Wolf 27 RR, so it's a 27 footer. Okay, well, there it is. Um, this one, if I remember right, is sitting at about $1,200 right now. There's where mine was parked, and uh, it's now uh, safely put away. <sighs> Comment below and tell me what you think. Hail damage always concerns me. It really does, because you just don't know if there's damage to the roof that could cause water intrusion down the walls or something like that. Um, definitely a little bit concerning. What is this over here? The water heater, I believe. Let's open this. Yeah, that's your water heater right there. Adjustable thermostat, that's nice. Okay, well, we've seen it. Here it is. What do you guys think? I'm definitely going to consider putting a bid on this since it's only like $1,200 right now. It's not going to sell for $1,200, guys. Not a chance it's going to sell for $1,200. But uh, I'm definitely considering putting a bid on it because it'd be nice to have a little, little toy haul or two. And I'm already considering selling my, uh, my uh, RV. So stay tuned for that. Video coming soon. Moving on. Next, we got a 2011 Wildwood Rockwood Signature Ultra Light. This thing is sitting at $125. <laughs> Right now, so I don't expect it's gonna sell for $125, but it's worth taking a look at. 2011 is relatively new compared to my 1987, so let's take a quick peek around the outside if we can even fit through here. I'm not sure what the damage is, but I keep thinking this one is a recovered theft. I'm, I'm about 95% sure this one is a recovered theft, so. One of the interesting things a lot of people probably don't know about RVs is the bumper is where you store your, uh, well, the shitter's full. Uh, this is where you store your hose for your, uh, for your poop chute, so to speak. Yeah. That right there, there's your 90 degree elbow. Um, and typically your hose would be sitting in here. In this case, it is it is missing or they put it somewhere else. But this one's got a slide out right here. It's got another slide out over there. So two slide outs, very nice. Oh man, 
All right, well, there's your, there's your poop chute over there. There's an entire bag of golf clubs. And this little deal right here is if you park long-term, this holds your poop hose in place. This comes with a lot of accessories, guys. This one is actually really, really nice. I'm surprised whoever stole it didn't steal the, uh, they didn't steal the golf clubs. There's your external connections, city water, sewer tank flusher. That's always nice. Okay. Well, let's go take a look inside. This is on all the windows, all this like reflective bubble stuff. Yeah. They sure didn't want anybody seeing inside, did they? What is this? Just an extra little storage compartment or? That's just for a window. It's a window and it's got like a little awning. That's nice. Looks like you could have dual batteries there if you wanted. Nice awning, lights on the outside. Uh-oh. Interesting, it's locked? No way. <laughs> I'll be damned. We can't get in this one. Uh, that makes you wonder, doesn't it? Is there somebody in there? These, these aren't locked, guys. Uh, I've, been, I've been doing this for years. <laughs> I've been doing this for years. These aren't locked. And, like, even though I know this is a theft recovery, look at this. You can see where someone pried in the door right here, right? I mean, they, they busted this door wide open. Yeah, they sure did, or at least they tried. Yeah, they did. They got in there. Huh. Okay. <laughs> That's very... That, uh, that kind of makes me want to bid on it more. <laughs> I'm serious. We don't know what the hell's in here. So this is this is very... Uh, someone tried getting in here. This didn't work. I mean, they tore this up a little bit. So they didn't get through this one. They ended up going through the other one, and that's how they got in. Huh. Well, I'll be honest with you. I looked at the pictures, and there was nothing showing the interior of this unit. So that is, that is very sketchy. That is very, very sketchy. We have no way of knowing what condition the inside is in. Uh, one thing I noticed right away is this slide here. Doesn't look like it's all the way in. It's really, really loose at the top. Gets tighter towards the bottom. I think you got a piece of weather stripping stipic, uh, sticking out right there as well. That's a big slide too. I mean, that's a big slide. Yeah, you see how tight it is up there? Okay, well, this one's this one's gonna be short, I guess. I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw a bit on this one though, because of the mystique. You you have no idea what's going on with this. Um, we have no idea what the interior is like. It could be completely gutted. Uh, it could be full of needles and drugs. Who knows? Uh, hopefully, no people. I think this is this is the part that just really concerns me. This is stolen. It's a theft recovery, but it's locked. There's no pictures of the interior. You would think once this was uncovered, uh, once this was recovered, the insurance company, right, would have forcibly entered. They even if they got, I mean, the door's already been pried open. Just pry it open again. You know, you would think the insurance company would have gone in there, opened this thing up to, you know, at least make sure there's nothing illegal left in here or people, God forbid, <laughs> you know, who knows what happened. This could be a Walter White situation, man. This thing could have been camped out in the desert cooking some of that blue, that pure <laughs> blue, you know what I mean? Uh, so I am, I, I'm intrigued. I'm also I'm also very, very cautious about this one because you don't know what you're going to find when you open this up. And we will open it up. If we win it, I will take a crowbar and I will, I will bust that damn door wide open. And, you know, maybe we're going to find it's in pristine condition. Maybe we're going to find it was a dope house, trap house. Then again, maybe there'll be people. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. This one is, is very, this one's very scary. So... I am definitely going to go back to the car. I'm going to put a bid in on this right now. So stay tuned. Who knows? Maybe we'll get this one. We can call this one sight unseen. Moving on. So real quick, I just wanted to show it to you. Here it is. It's a minimum bid. It's got a day left. 
$20,000 trailer. And there it is, Oklahoma Certificate of Title Salvage Recovered Theft. All right, so this is definitely a theft recovery, like I said. And look here, you look at the pictures, right? Scroll, scroll, scroll. Guess what you don't see? There are no pictures of the interior. That's it. That is it. No interior pics at all. So we have no way of knowing what's inside. So I think I'm going to... I'm going to throw, hell, I'm not going to sit here and just scroll through this all day, but why don't we throw like 1200 bucks on it and just see, just see what happens. There you go. Winning. How much am I winning it for? $425. That's a minimum bid though. The problem is if you can't see inside of it, nobody's going to pay any real money for this. All the appliances could be gone. You know, the wiring could be ripped out. So I, I don't see this one, even though it's originally, you know, supposedly worth twenty thousand uh, dollars. I don't see this one going for more than a couple grand tops. Next on my list, a 1999 Ford F550 Super Duty Power Stroke Diesel V8 Dual Rear Wheel Tow Truck. <laughs> That's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. She's loaded, man. She's got the uh, little bull guard right there, brush guard. You got you a, oops, you got you a block heater right here. Looks like there's a place for a winch right there as well. So it's already pre-wired. It's got some nice little pin striping. You got that bug deflector. Oh yeah. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. Tires look good so far. Big, big, big tow bed. I love this. You got that winch back there as well. This is nice. Like this is nice. Nice chrome finish right here. Tell me that is not gorgeous. Let's see what's in it. Does it come with dollies and stuff? No. Uh, you never know. That stuff may be on the other side. Probably not though. Rear tires, they're pretty well worn, but they're still usable. There's all your controls. This one is way better looking than the one I looked at before. Way better. Way better. So this is cool too. It's got that tilt pickup thing on the back. I don't know what you call this, but you know, these slide out. You can put some pins in them. You could just slap these suckers right behind the front wheels, just lift it up and roll out. Almost, almost, not quite, but almost as good as a, uh, as kind of like a repo vehicle. This thing would be difficult, in my opinion, to, to use as a repo vehicle, but this is nice. This is this is really nice. Makes me wonder what the other one went for. Starting fluid. Yeah, they took pretty much everything out of it, which makes sense. I love this blue color. Oh, it's a manual transmission too? Oh, dude. Yes. Yes. Oh, I like this. I like this a lot. Of course, as with the last one, I don't know how to use anything in it. I'm assuming this is what you would use for your PTO. Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see how the clutch feels. Decent. E-brake is not on. Oh, e-brake doesn't work. That's important, right? <laughs> that's, uh... Yeah, that's... E-brake is really important. A <laughs> manual transmission... Okay, well, we'll put it back. You got your granny gear, low gear, one, two, three, four, and overdrive, so five speed. I'm not sure what this is over here. Um, RFM control, RPM control, okay. So maybe that's the PTO. Yeah, it would help if I knew what I was looking at. Some kind of auxiliary lights right there, it looks like. Let's see what this says. Chelsea, this, this vehicle's equipped with a power takeoff Read owner's manual located in the glove box. See sun visor for operating instructions. Okay, what is a power takeoff? Uh, power takeoff operation mechanically shifted PTOs. Okay, uh, it says to engage the parking brake. This one doesn't work. Disengage clutch and shifter transmission to neutral. Shift the power takeoff. Okay, leave transmission in neutral. So, obviously, there's not much we're going to be able to do 
with the PTO. Uh, it is on a hill. I'm sure, uh, hopefully you can see that she's on a, she's on a hill. The wheels are turned towards my, uh, my Grand Wagoneer there. So we're going to have to be very, very careful with this. I don't, I don't want to engage the PTO and uh, have this thing decide it's going to try to take off on me. So why don't we see if it runs? I already know it's dead as a doornail, guys. Like something like this always going to be dead. So, oh, hopefully the hood struts. Nope, they don't work at all. Okay. <laughs> Great. So I guess what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to do this one handed. I'm going to have to set the camera down. Let me throw a jump pack on it real quick. We'll fire it up, see what it sounds like. All right. Yeah, she was dead as a doornail. We already knew that though. That's, that's no surprise. Oh, let's climb up in this bad boy and let's see what she does. All right, let's turn that down, turn that off. All right, ready? Oh. Oh. Well, seems my booster pack is not uh not able to do it. Ha! Hot damn. I'll try it one more time, but I don't think my booster pack can handle it. I don't know, man. I, that booster pack has started many 6.0s, 6.2s, 7.3s. Um, that's never been a problem before. All right. You got all your little lights. Well, this sucks. Come on. Come on, old girl. Don't do me like that. Well, this is just gonna, this is just gonna be a short video, I suppose. She can't do it. She just can't do it. Damn. Ooh, my cable's getting warm too. Yeah, uh, finally found one that the old booster pack just couldn't handle. Ooh, she did get warm too. Boy, she got, she got warm. Yeah. And you know what? I know you guys are going to say, Randy, why didn't you bring both booster packs? I never need them. Like, never need them. When I bring both of them, I got to lug this, this thing around with me with two of these heavy bat battery packs in them. And then I don't ever use them. But then again, the one time I really need both of them, I don't have them. So it's got 394,000 miles on the odometer. It's listed as a run and drive. I bet it runs. I do. I bet it runs. Do I need it? Not a chance. I really don't need it. But also, on the flip side of that, I kind of do need it. It makes me think like, instead of having to go drop my trailer, pick up my trailer, and move cars around, you could just drive this. You could just drive it. You could have Copart IA just drop the cars right on the bed, man. Just drop them right on the back, cinch them down, drive down the road. How much easier would that be? I don't know. I don't know. Comment below. Tell me what you think of the F550. Should we throw a bit on it and just see what happens? Sight unseen, basically. We don't know if it runs. It says it runs, but we can't verify that because my dumbass didn't bring an extra battery pack. Tell me what you think of the F550, guys. That's it. We're done. I'm going to get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know you enjoyed the content today. Definitely share the video on your social media platforms on Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff if you think your friends might enjoy seeing something like this. It goes a long way to help grow the channel. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, definitely consider subscribing so you don't miss any future videos. We've got a lot of stuff coming out. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.